Temper VV here with you for the next hour talking about professional wrestling, which is something we do every single day here on the Sports Byline Broadcasting Network. Tune in, iHeart American Forces Radio, SportsByline.com, over the air affiliates like KMAV, 99KMSR, WYOH, and many others. Maybe you're listening on podcast or replay on SiriusXM, or maybe you're video streaming on Twitch or YouTube. However you're joining me today, I'd just like to say thank you. Hopefully wherever you are, it's sunny outside. If not, hopefully it's sunny inside your mind. Big boss man, Brian Alvarez. You didn't think he was going to show up two Fridays in a row, did you? No way. He is enjoying that last little bit of time he has left out with the family in Northern California. Before he boards a plane and they all come back home, something is bound to go wrong there, which will make for a very funny Brian and Vinny show next week, surely. Filthy Tom Lawler, also not here. We'll go into why a little bit later on. He's in Chicago getting ready for the Windy City Riot. Speaking of big bags of wind, news on Chris Jericho to start the show. Sorry, Chris, I had to. Filed for three new trademarks this week. On April 10th, Jericho applied to trademark the Learning Tree, the Educator, and the Rarefied Air of Jericho. All three terms good to go along with the latest version of Jericho's character. Gave a heel interview on AEW Dynamite this week after several really weird weeks going back and forth with Hook. Trying to be his tag team partner, trying to be his mentor, trying to get beaten up by him, all those sorts of things. And they all happened until Hook had enough of Jericho this past Wednesday on Dynamite. Said, you, you get out. You know, he teamed up with Shibata and uh, Jericho and Hook. They lost the Shane Taylor promotions out of their argument. That's that. But at least we we have an idea that Jericho not only is now cutting this promo and going fully heel by all of those trademarks it sounds like he has put together, we are going to see a new incarnation of the learning tree, Chris Jericho. A whole lot to get into today, SmackDown, Fallout from Dynamite, the rating and all that. When we get back, Wrestling Observer Live. Be here with you. You know, we do this show for an hour at a time every single day, but if you want to try to find us 24-7, you can do so on Twitter slash X. I am at SemperVV. Tom is at Filthy Tom Lawler. Brian is at Brian Alvarez. Brian with a Y for those people out there who are new. The website is at WONF4W, and the broadcaster is at Sports Byline USA. Jim Valley is here with you on Saturdays at 1 p.m. Eastern Time, 10 a.m. Pacific, and Andrew Zarian is here with you on Sundays starting at 6 p.m. Eastern Time. I'd love it if you made the wrestling news part of your day, everything you need to know to get your day started or get you up to date or get you to your favorite long-form wrestling review pod like Wrestling Observer Radio, which I will assume a new one is going to be up at some point later on this afternoon with Dave Meltzer and Gary Gonzalez. But each episode of the Wrestling News is between 5 and 15 minutes long every single day. Just the stuff you need to know to get you caught up. Usually posted at about 9 a.m. Eastern Time. No clickbait or speculation or rumors or nonsense. Just the Wrestling News. Find it wherever you find your favorite podcasts. Or head on over to TheWrestlingNews.com and at WrestlingNewsAV on Facebook and Twitter. The F4W online F4W, I guess, what would it be? Figure 4 Weekly, I don't know, Figure 4 Online slash Wrestling Observer Convention is taking place on Memorial Day weekend. All of the information about that is up on the front page of the website, and you can also go to f4wonline.com slash Vegas. All of the information, not a full itinerary or anything like that, but you can find out how to get all your tickets for all the events and when everybody's going to be meeting up. So you can check that out. Maybe a little bit more information on that as the show goes on, but Got a lot to get into today, as always. Just me here today. Brian is going to be back on Monday. Filthy Tom also going to be back on Monday, I would assume, hopefully with some championship gold. We will get to that later on. But from my favorite story of the weekend, we've got an update on it. The situation with Sabu no-showing the Indie Wrestling Hall of Fame induction ceremony has now been fully resolved on Sunday, Game Changer Wrestling boss man Brett Lauderdale posted this tweet 
In the true spirit of independent wrestling, Sabu has decided to keep his deposit and no-show the Indie Hall of Fame ceremony today. He accepted the booking and took the money, but doesn't want to get in the elevator and come upstairs. <laughs> what a legend. A little later on, indie wrestler Ziggy Haim posted a response saying, quote, I once saw him and Super Genie shove an entire roast chicken bought for the locker room into a large purse, not wrapped or anything, just took the rotisserie chicken and put it in a purse. <laughs> with everything going on, with all the tribalism that takes place in professional wrestling, with everybody being so serious about what takes place and should AEW do this and what about WWE doing that, I love stories like this because this... This is professional wrestling. All that other stuff, it's really turned into just big business now. That's sports entertainment. This, this is professional wrestling, especially indie professional wrestling. But all's well that ends well, because this was posted up to the front page of the site of WrestlingObserver.com. Earlier on today, Joseph Courier, one of the people that does a great job for the website, you got, and, and all those guys, too, over WrestleMania weekend, Joseph Courier, Josh Nason, uh, Brian Rose, Ethan Renner, everybody that posts up all the news up to the website, all of them do, have done a great job. But Sabu has returned the money that he skipped out on. It's true. The ECW legend yesterday tweeted out that he didn't appear at the ceremony because, quote, he changed his mind. <laughs> that was it. That's what he put out there. Uh, GCW promoter Brett Lauderdale responded that there were no hard feelings and that he still respected Sabu as both a person and a performer, but he has given back the $300 deposit that Brett has paid him. Brett has turned around and donated that money to the William Way LGBT Community Center in Philadelphia. So there you go. All's well that ends well with just such a great indie wrestling story. They came out of WrestleMania weekend. It's probably better that Sabu wasn't there. I, mean, I shouldn't say it wasn't better that he wasn't there. But with the people that were going into the Hall of Fame this year, I mean, you could almost put Sabu in by himself, you know, in a ceremony where you didn't have anybody else. But the Briscoe brothers went in, Trent Acid went in, Steve Carino went in, Mercedes Martinez, Hot Stuff Eddie Gilbert, and one of the old Stern Whack Packers, Kevin Hogan, all were inducted. So, you know, Sabu was just, I guess, going to be icing on that cake anyway. And now that he's given the money back. Well, damn it, there's always next year. So that at least is one of the more fun stories uh, coming out of WrestleMania weekend. One of the other stories coming out of WrestleMania weekend was the announcement that on Wednesday night, AEW, by way of the Young Bucks, were going to show the video from All In in London. We now have a rating for that show. Brought in 819,000 viewers to TBS up 9% from last week's 752,000. It is the first time that AEW has been over 800,000 since February 28th, which was seven shows ago. In the 18 to 49 year old demographic, the rating was a 0 .30, up 30% from last week's 0.23. This week's audience rating equates to 400,000 viewers. So that's actually a big victory for the show because the only audience the entire year that has been larger was on January 17th when they had 435,000. That was actually their high watermark show for the year. Uh, they had 891,000 that week. So that's been the biggest show of the year. So uh, it worked, at least in, in a short-term bump. I have not seen if Russell Nomics has posted the quarter hours yet. I would be fascinated to see how what it did, how what it spiked to, and then what it fell to, because you gotta figure that quarter probably had all of the attention in the world. So did it do nine hundred thousand and then the show fell off a cliff after that? We're gonna find out. But just to give you an idea also on how they've been doing in that demo, the World's End pay per view go home show, uh last December twenty seventh did four hundred and eight thousand. So that's They've done the most since then, which was the last time, I guess you could say, that they've had the most interest in the product that was leading into MJF and Adam Cole revealing himself to be the devil. Show finished number three in the demo on cable TV for the evening, as it always does, behind two NBA games. 
Rampage tonight on TNT with matches taped on Wednesday in Charleston. You got an AEW TBS open house match. Julia Hart defends the title against Layla Hirsch, who has not been seen on AEW TV since March of 2022. She's actually been, or she was at least, on a big singles match winning streak in Ring of Honor until she lost to Red Velvet in the quarterfinals of the ROH World Women's TV title tournament in February. Zack Knight is going to be making his AEW TV debut against Angelo Parker. Knight is the brother of Soraya, who's going to be at his side along with Harley Cameron. Orange Cassidy faces Alex Reynolds and Jay White. The artist formerly known as Jay White faces Matt Seidel. That new Japan, I'm, I was wrong. I was wrong about Jay White coming over to AEW, at least from the time that Juice Robinson has gotten hurt. And I was all for putting him with the guns. I liked the idea of Bullet Club. I liked all of that. And this is where we're at with Jay White right now. Kills me. Absolutely kills me. But doesn't kill me as bad as Comcast right now. All the hard wiring is fine. But for like the third time this week, Comcast Business Internet which is costing me like 250 bucks a month or something like that with the taxes and the fees and the gimmicks and the this craptastic router that they gave me that I'm paying rent on right now too. It's like ridiculous. The Wi-Fi doesn't work. Everything hardwired, you know, the, 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 the gimmick box here to patch me into Brian's studio, which then patches in the sports byline, you know, the computer, that's all fine. But the Wi-Fi, once again, 250 bucks a month for what? That was my, my Bryant rant moment for today. Got a lot more to get into, including AEW Collision and Battle of the Belts. Did you know there was one of those this weekend? Got that coming up. WWE SmackDown tonight and so much more. Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Sempervivi here with your Wrestling Observer Live. Still hate Xfinity. Still hate Comcast. Yes, I do. That's got nothing to do with the rest of the day. Everything else seems to be working fine. I won't jinx it. <sighs> so, Russell Ticks today put out a estimate on the attendance situation for tomorrow's AEW Collision Show from the Truist Arena in Highland Heights, Kentucky. Highland Heights, Kentucky. The Truist Arena, 10,000-seat building on the campus of Northern Kentucky University. The current setup for the show, 2086. Tickets distributed, 1,759. If you're wondering if there was an effect from the dynamite and the airing of the video, well, it's up 85 tickets since the last update three days ago. So with that said, you're trying to spin this a little bit from the AEW side or from an AEW fan side. Um, it doesn't seem like going to Northern Kentucky University uh, is a, is a very beneficial place to go if you're a professional wrestling company. Um, I looked at cage match earlier today. I had to go back to 2016 and 2017 to find shows that actually took place at the campus and it was two nxt house shows july 2016 is estimated to estimated to have done 1500 and in may of 2017 an nxt house show did 900 so this it's it may be another oh what seven years or so before you get another show over there in Highland Heights because you don't seem to be coming out for the wrestling. Certainly not coming out for this nationally televised very long night that is ahead of you tomorrow. Katsuyori Shibata against Lee Moriarty, a match on paper that if you are a if you're a Graps fan, if you're a wrestling fan of Matt Wrestling, if you're a Japanese wrestling fan, I have a feeling this is going to be a really good match. It's not one of those matches that's going to move the needle as far as ratings go or anything like that. But Shibata and Moriarty on paper, again, for a lot of people, that's a really cool match. The big thing they have announced thus far, the Blackpool Combat Club, Brian Danielson and Claudio will face off against the Don Callis family of Kyle Fletcher and Powerhouse Hobbs. They have announced for next Wednesday already that Will Ospreay will be facing off against Claudio in a match that, again, made a lot of people happy, made a lot of wrestling fans happy. 
that I have a feeling everything that's going to be around that match, that should be a little bit more of a needle mover. I hope it is for Will Ospreay, you know, who's, uh, he was, he was definitely not afraid of the grind, you know, and definitely not holding a grudge about somebody saying possibly maybe him not being all about the grind, but yeah, there you go. AEW world women's title eliminator match. Also tonight, timeless Tony storm or a Saturday night, timeless Tony storm against Azumi. Collision is back in its regular time slot Saturday night at 8 p.m. Eastern time. College basketball is out of the way, although we are closing in on the NBA and NHL playoff season. So that's going to move some things around uh, in the next two months on Fridays and Saturdays. AEW Battle of the Belts 10. I got to be honest, I have not been, I guess because of Mania Weekend and everything going on, I didn't even realize it was taking place until I was starting to get stuff ready for the show today. AEW International Title Eliminator match. Roderick Strong will face off against Rocky Romero. And an FTW title match. Hook will face off against Shane Taylor. Which means we get the possibility of seeing Hook deliver a T-bone Tazplex to Shane Taylor. Which is going to be one hell of a visual. Miro will not be there. But he's on his way back. At least that's what he says. He is recovering from a shoulder and an elbow injury. We, we finally have some clarity on what's been going on with Miro. He said to Bill after this weekend during an interview at WrestleCon in Philadelphia that he got everything taken care of in January. He's been out of action since December of 2023, World's End, when he faced off against Andrade, sent him back and back to the WWE. There was a situation uh, right after that where Tony Khan had booked a Meat Madness match, which was going to include Miro and Keith Lee, but both guys were hurt <laughs> and out of action. And Khan decided to, to postpone the match until everybody was healthy again. Miro responded by saying, I've been injured since September and I got medical attention in January. Sorry he wasn't aware of it. You know, just to, again... It's been said many times, Tony Khan, if you're out of the way for whatever reason, uh, he will tend to forget about you and then will not talk to you and not keep you updated. So with that said, after did ask Miro about what it's like working with Tony Khan, and he says, Tony's great, man. He's creative. His mind is always running. He always thinks about wrestling. He's always thinking about how to get things better. So I respect that. I respect that he loves wrestling. He did all his life, and now he's carried that to the second or one of the biggest companies in the world. So happy talk right now for Miro. We'll see about him coming back at some point down the line here. They could use him. You know, if his mind and his heart and his body is into it, if he's about it, you know, they can absolutely use him as a threat. Yes, things have not been good from the jump with him coming in wearing his pajama clothes or whatever it was, playing video games and whatnot. There have been some big up, ups and downs since then, but he's one of those guys I think that's got enough, even at this point, enough built up with the fans that they want to see this guy come back and lay waste to somebody. So hopefully he can come back sooner rather than later because, again, they can just use all of the little bursts of energy that they can get. SmackDown, that's had all the energy in the world. It's going to have energy tonight, over 13,000 people. Once again, they will tell you that they have sold out another building live from the Little Caesars Arena in Detroit. There is, like, nothing announced for this show. Yeah, with the things we know so far, at least, checking on this about 2.30 Eastern time before I jumped on, WWE Universal Champion Cody Rhodes and WWE Women's Champion Bailey. I hate that. Why do they not just call it the WWE Universal Women's Championship? And that way you have the world on one side, the Universal on the other. I don't know why this is so difficult. I don't know why it was so difficult uh, to come together with some names and some matches to put on this show, but... It's the WrestleMania Fallout edition, so that's why you're going to tune in. Probably doesn't matter anyway because the draft is coming up on April 26th, so God knows who's going to show up on this show. Just guessing. Maybe Austin Theory and Grayson Waller bringing back the WWE uh, Tag Team Championships 
you know, they can rub that in that, hey, we're, we're finally after all this time of, uh, of the, the Usos. And, and then after that, the, the Judgment Day, finally, we have our own tag team titles and we brought them back. And then they can get into it with somebody. Wouldn't hurt my feelings if it was the Street Profits. I would love to see the Creeds kind of catch a break right now and like be in a position like that. Although match wise, for as athletic as Theory and Waller are, I mean, puppies with big paws when it comes to uh, when it comes to the Creed brothers. And I don't know, maybe that's not stylistically the match you want. One that would make a lot of sense. The Street Profits now with all that stuff being done and over with and buried, hopefully with the final testament, seeing the final testament in NXT over the next couple of weeks. They don't have to be on SmackDown at all. Keep Bobby Lashley away from them. Find something for him to do. Maybe it's the Profits and Theory and Waller. LA Knight, figure he's going to be there too. Got the big one over AJ Styles. They were concentrating in the weeks leading up to WrestleMania. They would make time for Tiffany Stratton. Now that WrestleMania is over with, probably time to make some more time for Tiffy time on the main roster. Carmelo Hayes. Even though he's still in the mix for the next couple of weeks here in NXT with Trick Williams, it's time to get him starting to do something on that roster. Jacob Fatu and Tama Tonga at some point are going to show up on WWE television. Is tonight the night that that happens? Do you decide to hold that off till Monday? We'll see. Maybe you hold it off longer than that. I just don't know what the timeline is here with Roman Reigns. Is he going to be around? Uh, will he be around by proxy through Paul Heyman and through other guys? I don't know. I, I don't think that Jimmy Uso, though, is long uh, on the, the heel side of the register. And he and Jay, that was a feud that peaked a couple of weeks before Mania. And it was downhill from there. And then the match at WrestleMania, it wasn't good. It, in, it, when it comes to WrestleMania matches, when it comes to big matches, it just it went long to me, and they just didn't have it. And I think the Usos, and I know there's main event Jay, and I'd like to see it, but even that's cooled off a little bit. I wouldn't mind seeing them back together. They don't have to wrestle as a tag team week in, week out, as if they're the New Day or something like that. They just, I think, need to probably get back together. And if you bring in Jacob Fatu and Tamatanga with Roman Reigns, then you still have Solo Sokoa there as well too. And then later on down the line, when you're ready for Roman and Solo, Solo can kick it with Jay and Jimmy, with his brothers again. And maybe that's how the Rock gets involved with trying to tidy up the bloodline. We, we You know, there's a lot that they can do with that situation. But knowing that Tamatanga is there, and with Jacob Fatu at least telling people that he is signed with WWE. Be interesting to see when they bring those guys into the loop. A little bit of other WWE news before we go to break here. Milwaukee, hoping to bring a future WWE Royal Rumble event to the city. CBS 58 reported this week that Milwaukee leaders have been in talks with WWE and are pitching them about bringing a future Royal Rumble to American Family Field that has got a retractable roof on it. So... Boy, you want to see some angry media members? Put the Royal Rumble in Milwaukee in January and put an early April WrestleMania in Minnesota. Sure, it's under a dome, but it's going to be cold and it's going to be snowy. Wrestling Observer Live. BB here with you, Wrestling Observer Live. I remember a couple, of, like, more than a couple of months ago now, I was talking about the fact that Minnesota keeps putting their name in the mix to host a WWE show mostly pushing to host a WrestleMania and it, it makes sense. It does. They can, they've been starved for quite some time as far as having a mega size tent pole event up there. They have certainly enough fans that would be able to make it. It's not like it's some small city. It's a big metropolis that, you know, planes can easily fly in and out of, or if God knows you have to drive in from Chicago, it's not like it's going to kill you or anything like that. But I remember way back when the Washington Redskins played, would have been, I think, Buffalo in the Super Bowl. Uh, I'm trying to remember when it was. I think it may have been 1991. I can't, can't recall, but I do recall it being in Minnesota. And 
you're watching at home, it was fine. But for everybody that went, <laughs> as far as fans and their experiences in and around it, and as far as the media that loves to bitch and moan and convict and complain about everything, they hated the fact that it was a hated the fact that it was there. So it's interesting because that factors into this stuff. You know, if it was up to Nick Khan, I guarantee you he would be in Vegas. He would be in, and it isn't up to Nick Khan to some extent, except you got to make money off these things. And if you're doing that and you got to move it around, you have to. But I would bet Glendale, Arizona. I would bet, you know, Phoenix, Los Angeles, Las Vegas, you know, places where it's nice that time of year. They would probably have that. One other little thing, too, that is has come up in, in rumors uh, and speculation going about the possibility uh, maybe that the Hall of Fame moves away from WrestleMania, maybe goes to one of the other events. It's interesting. I, I kind of like the idea of WrestleMania moving to SummerSlam weekend. I think that would be great. And I, I think, you know, as long as you're not going to boil everybody, that's one of the problems with Vegas for SummerSlam when it was at Allegiant. Like, you know, in a place like Nashville, it's about perfect for August. But making that maybe more of a standalone event instead of hooking it to SmackDown and doing something, like, that would be the perfect time to do it. You could also do it around the time of the Royal Rumble if you wanted to because the NFL... During the Super Bowl, there's where there's a lot of speculation and talk about, hey, who, who's going to be, you know, make the, the, the final cut for the, the NFL. And again, it's going to be interesting to see how they play that, you know, because there's a lot of things that go into it. But if they decide to move it off WrestleMania, I'm for kind of putting it into SummerSlam because, again, for older people, it makes it a lot easier. I'm sure you can make it more of a, you know, a rewarding event. You know, it's a lot better to go to you know, again, Dallas or Nashville or, or Tampa or something like that in August, as opposed to, to being in January and in Milwaukee or something like that. But we'll see. That may just all be, you know, some, some rumors and some whispers and, and nothing to it. But we'll see as they move forward. Uh, Dan Ventrell uh, whispered out the door, the former executive vice president of talent relations for WWE. Story broken on Thursday by SE Scoops and then later on confirmed by Fightful. In fact, uh, Fightful got an internal memo from WWE president Nick Khan, which stated that WWE has begun the process of reorganizing its talent relations group. Moving forward, Chris Legentle, in addition to his role in comms, will help us in leading this new group. Matt Altman, in addition to his role in marketing, will be working closely with Chris to help in this endeavor. Talent development and recruiting will now report to Shawn Michaels, which would only seem to make sense considering he's running NXT. All of the talent, which includes talent relations, development, and recruiting, will still ultimately report to Paul Levesque. As of today, Dan Ventrell will be moving on from WWE. We thank Dan for his tremendous contributions. I don't know what those contributions were, other than he helped bring SummerSlam to Las Vegas in 2021. He used to be the Las Vegas Raiders uh, slash Oakland Raiders. He was at one point an executive vice president, became their general counsel, and then for a very short period of time worked as the president uh, if you ask Mark Davis, the owner of the Raiders, it was always an interim, interim role. Uh, he was pushed out in 2022. I believe he said at the time he was being pushed out as a scapegoat or as a, a fall guy or just something basically related to the fact that the NFL was looking into bad working conditions when it came to the Oakland Raiders and a whole bunch of nonsense that took place there. But with all the organization, and it was said when TKO took over the company, there were going to be a lot of redundancy cuts. There were going to be a lot of people leaving. We've seen a lot of people leave, not the least of which was Kevin Dunn. Lee Fitting, formerly of ESPN, was put into the position to run these shows and to have a new artistic and creative vision for the television. And it has worked out gorgeously, beautifully, whatever you want to say. It has been perfect, at least thus far, in my opinion, all of the little things and some of the big things that they have done to update the shows. I think they've done a fantastic job with that. TNA Wrestling? 
Yes, they presented Impact last night on Access TV. Matches that were taped in March uh, March 22nd, 23rd, when they were at the 2300 Arena in Philadelphia. Everything that happened on the show is leading towards TNA Rebellion, which is next Saturday night, April 20th, from the Palms Casino Resort in Las Vegas. They love Las Vegas, and it's interesting with WWE going in possibly possibly the move of nxt into the ufc fight center whatever they call it uh, brain locking on it right now but if that happens the performance center it's interesting you know do you rent that out you know does does do you go ahead and put a a nice word in for tna to possibly become a house promotion in florida again uh in orlando or at full sale you know there were rumors about that it's to me they're going to need to have some sort of base at some point and again they know they have the studio in nashville but they got to figure out a place that they can operate out of where people don't have to cross the border so much and again you can actually do tv out of it every week or at least a place you can move tv to that makes it look a little bit more interesting and you don't have to tape so far in advance but Again, that's that would be me getting into their pockets and their philosophy on why they do such things. That's got nothing to do with TNA Rebellion. On that show, Moose will defend the TNA World Title against Nick Nemeth. I mean, the former Dolph Ziggler. I, you know, again, Moose, you've done everything you possibly could with Moose in that company. Putting over Nemeth, I think, would would make the most sense. Sense <laughs> Nemeth, Fenth. There we go. TNA Knockouts World Title Match. Jordan Grace will defend against Steph DeLander with Matt Cardona. I want to see Mance Warner make an appearance in TNA. That's what TNA... TNA could use Mancer. TNA could use Mancer and Effie, just not wrestling each other. That's just too much blood, too much gore, too much violence, too much hair shaven off and pulled out. TNA World Tag Team title match, The System of Brian Myers and Eddie Edwards against Speedball Mountain, Speedball Mike Bailey and Trent Seven. TNA X Division title, Mustafa Ali against Jake Something, Full me- which probably has happened plenty of time in AAW. I'd have to go back and look at that. Both guys, AAW products in Chicago. Full Metal Mayhem match, Frankie Kazarian against Eric Young. Last Man Standing match, Josh Alexander against Hammerstone. I've liked those two together, actually. I thought that's Hammerstone has been, I thought, a good addition to TNA. We'll see where they go with him after this Alexander match, because I have a feeling they're going to be done for a while with each other after that. And then Rich Swan, alongside AJ Francis, the former top dollar, will face off against Joe Hendry. Sadly, Yuya Uemura will not be with him. TNA is going to be going back to Chicago in June for their Against All Odds weekend. And since CM Punk has been recovering from that injury... I'm just speculation and just starting a rumor here. Will he show up at that show? Does Ace Steel not work for that promotion? Maybe we can start a rumor that CM Punk has got some beef with Lance Storm, got heat with Lance Storm. He might show up at that show. I wouldn't be surprised if he does. I don't know if he will or not. But Cicero Stadium, June 14th and 15th. Tickets for that show go on sale next Saturday, August, April 20th. They're going to run the Against All Odds as a streaming show. That's what they're going to be running there. TNA Plus, which will feature at least two title matches, one for the TNA World Title and another for the Knockouts World Title. Hard to believe that Mustafa Ali in his city, he won't be there defending the X Division title. Then the next day, they're going to hold a series of television tapings. Matches for both shows are going to start being announced in late May. They're TNA's first shows in Chicago since Bound for Glory in October of 2023. Everybody runs Chicago, New Japan Pro Wrestling. After all of that time of just not being able to find the right place, could not find a place in the city to run. And again, they still can't because they're actually... Win Trust Arena. They're actually they did they did well there. I just wonder the next time they come back with a show, it's probably not gonna be at Win Trust. And it's like 
I don't know. But I'll leave that for my friend on the Big Audio Nightmare, my co-host on that show, which you can find at WrestlingObserver.com. Adam Summers to complain about. We've complained about that a lot when it comes to New Japan and running Chicago. But Windy City Riot, nineteen ninety nine. That's how much it's going to cost. You could try to order it through New Japan World. I apparently they've had issues as far as people being able to find it. Just go to New Japan social media accounts. Their English language social media accounts. You'll be able to to find a link to it that way. The current setup for the show, 6627, tickets distributed, 6136. Again, about a 10,000-person building, so it is going to be as, as good as it gets. So it, it, uh, probably going to be a very hot crowd as well, too. There's one pre-show match, Matt, Grant, Matt Vandergriff against Zane Jay. Actually, there's two. I just can't believe that this is a pre-show match, other than that they want to show you Mina Shirakawa for free on TV. Mina Shirakawa and Viva Van will face off against Trisha Dora and Alex Windsor. Minoru Suzuki will face Ren Narina on the main show. New Japan Strong Women's Champion Stephanie Vaquer defends against Azumi. Four-way match for the New Japan Strong Tag Team Championship. Hikaleo and El Fantasmo will defend against Shane Haste and Mikey Nichols. Filthy Tom Lawler and Fred Rosser. And yes, the West Coast Wrecking Crew of Royce Isaacs and Jarrell Nelson. The scapegoat, Jack Perry. Face off against Shooter. Show to Umino. We'll see what the reaction is for Jack Perry tonight. Hiromu Takahashi against Mustafa Ali. Riot Rules Tornado Tag Match. Eddie Kingston and three partners against Gabe Kidd and three partners. Now, David Finley... And uh, Clark Connors, I believe, are in the United States because they're going to be working the Prestige show this weekend alongside Gabe Kidd. So I'm guessing we're going to have some full Bullet Club action going on there, but we'll see. New Japan Strong, I'm sorry, New Japan World Television title match, Matt Riddle against Zack Sabre Jr., Nick Nemeth against Tomohiro Ishii, and the IWGP World Heavyweight Championship match between Tetsuya Naito... And John Moxley, can John Moxley win the IWGP Championship? Will New Japan let John Moxley win the IWGP Championship? You could do a title change now. Have Naito win the title back on Forbidden Door. A lot of people wouldn't mind seeing Moxley win that belt. Then having somebody like an Umino turn on him and win the title. A Suji win the title from him. Then that could sow some dissension between Suji and Naito, and you got a new twist to that story? We'll see what they do. New Japan's also going to be running New Taipei Taiwan this weekend as well, too. I'm serious. I'll let you know what's going on there when we get back from break. Wrestling and Server Live. Pelicans hold on, driving into Murray. Somebody's thrown something on the floor. 46 seconds to go, and a whistle blew. It's a chicken wing. Why would someone throw something that good out on the floor? <laughs> it's crispy. Yes. It's warm. Yes. And I almost had to go out. I'm so hungry. Uh, I hear your stomach over here. Gr You're hot. What's that guy? I hope he eats it. Back on the show, Mike Semper, VV Wrestling Surfer Live. Kevin Harlan is great announcing anything, anything, any sport. Uh, anything it doesn't matter what it is and now now i want chicken wings not just any kind of chicken wings because i'm from the east coast because i'm from the mid-atlantic specifically because i'm from the dmv and i live at the beach i want dry rubbed old bay chicken wings i want those i may go out and get those after this show i don't think you can get those in taiwan god knows when you go to some of the markets in asia what you could be picking up and carrying with you, but uh, no, no chicken wings. Not at least with Old Bay on them over there, I wouldn't think. But there are going to be new, never open weight six man tag team champions crowned on the show. They're holding a four team mini tournament in New Taipei, Taiwan on Sunday. New Japan is Hiroshi Tanahashi. Toru Yano and Bolton Oleg against United Empire's Callum Newman, Francesco Akira, and Great Okan in one semifinal. The other is going to have Bushi, Shingo, and Yotasuji against the House of Tortures, Evil Show, and Yoshinobu Kanemaru. The winners will face off in the main event. You may say, Mike, okay, what happens? 
if there's, you know, maybe maybe there's a, a double count out, maybe, maybe just something happens where neither team advances. Don't worry about it. They can end the show with an IWGP tag title match, which is also going to be taking place. Hiroki Goto and Yoshihashi defend against Sonata and Yuya Uemura. There you go, folks. Hey, if you're in the Tampa area, the National Wrestling Alliance having tapings tonight and tomorrow at the WEDU studios. So you can check that out down there. For all the rest of you who don't want to go anywhere and just want to hear your news via podcast, well, guess what? As always, Wrestling Observer Live is going to be back. And when we do, it'll be after a while. And we're going to talk to you. See ya.